We are excited to have an in-person meeting, but we also are going to have to um, post everything we possibly can to make it convenient for folks. And obviously our pandemic is not over, so we're still dealing with all of those um, parts um, that that plays in. So we're going to record all of our resources that we talk about today. At the end, we're going to go over some homework, um, especially homework helps for our system. And this pink page, if you didn't get that, um, that's probably kind of sums up a lot of the resources that you can um, are at our fingertips for helping your child with homework, um, especially as they get older. I, I don't know. Let, I'm 53, okay, so I'm old. So I do not remember some of those things I learned. <laughs> and so going back with my kids and trying to help them with, with math, for instance, can be a struggle. Um, and even in grade school. So that, yeah. So anyway, there's help there um, at our fingertips. And so this just gives you a rundown of, of where to go um, and how to get those helps. The other things that we're going to talk about with homework are just some cool ideas for making um, homework stations at home, how to be organized, just some things that we found and we're just talk about that at the end. Well, we went to Atlanta and what it is, each district um, can, well, not just district, because I think we were paired with Cabela, so each, um, and I can't say county because Thomasville had two, so it may be by each number, but they are chosen, they choose parents, and then you have to fill out an application and you have to put some, um, like an essay into it and once you answer the questions and fill out the application and send it in, then the Georgia Department of Ed chooses who um, gets to go. So then you go to Atlanta and you learn a lot. It was um, very eye-opening um, about what goes on with parents and how much control parents actually have and um, how much parents actually contribute to their child's education. So I'm gonna start with an icebreaker. Um, everybody knows how to play rock, paper, scissors, right? <laughs> Okay, so what I want you to do is pair up with some other person, play three games of rock, paper, scissors. The winner out of those games is going to pair up with a winner from another group. So, and we keep playing till we get one winner. So the winners keep playing with winners. Um, and once you lose, you don't get to play again. So, um, just pair up and we can play rock, paper, scissors and see who's the winner picked in our area basically but we have, we send an application in and they go through their process and the superintendent um, has really enjoyed uh, he talks a lot about having that parent council and the time that he spent with getting parents input from all over the state of Georgia not just our metro areas um, but even down here in the south so if you're interested please let me know and we can talk about that I think we've got another week before the application has to be in so we'd love to have you do that and and I just want to mention too that Lee's the second parent from our area and I think some of our other sisters, Ms. Daniels, do you know if, if you've had a parent from Mitchell go to the, the advisory? Okay, I know, I feel like Thomasville um, and Bainbridge and some other areas close by us have also had parents be able to go. So it's really a neat, neat, um, neat um, program. All right, so let's get started. I want to introduce myself. I'm Cindy Smith. I'm the parent coordinator and homeless liaison for Pelham City Schools and I send out a uh, it's now digital. I've learned how to do a digital newsletter, uh, which I printed off on the table for you. Um, that goes out each month, hopefully at the beginning of the month, sometimes. Sometimes it's a little bit late. Um, but I send it through email. I send it through the remind um, uh, parent that I have, parent remind that I have set up for each school. Um, we try to send it out. It's on our website for sure. We put it on Facebook. We try to put it out as many directions as we can. But that kind of sums up our activities. It's also a newsletter with resources for you. This last uh, month we were highlighting the libraries and, and putting in all the activities that the libraries are doing. Um, we usually have, sometimes we have surveys in there. We have just lots of parent information, things that you need to know. So check that out. If you haven't already, it comes out monthly. Um, so the first thing I want to do is talk to you about our resources that are in our system. I want to introduce to you our counselors. Um, and our school personnel because they are so busy, especially this time of year, um, and, and need to probably run off to the next thing. So I'm going to introduce our counselors first. So Miss Danielle Williamson is our middle school counselor, and you have a helper with you today. I do. If you'll introduce her and come on up, and then Miss Ray, I'm not sure is going to make it from the elementary, <laughs> but Miss Lewis is from the high school is also here. Um, if y'all want to come up and just talk a little bit about your roles and how you can help parents. 
Good morning. As she mentioned, I'm Danielle Williamson. I'm PCMS's counselor. Um, that includes fifth through eighth. Um, we adopted the fifth grade two years, two or three years ago, and we're glad to have them. At the middle school, our theme this year is new in 22. Um, as Ms. Smith mentioned, the pandemic is still an issue that we all are facing, and so we thought new in 22 would be an appropriate um, start because a lot of our students, this is new especially our fifth and sixth grade students coming into a school year where they lost half a year. And then last year we went to school, if they came to school every day, they came to school approximately 60 days. We normally go 178 days. So that's two, you know, that's 18 months without structured schedules, structured social activities, structured um, schedule changes. So we are definitely new in 22. We are definitely reteaching a lot of social behaviors at the school. As a parent, we'd love to hear from you and your input on how you, your feedback when your child comes home. I know you often will get nothing. I don't know. I don't remember. Um, we encourage you to ask different questions instead of how your school day was. Ask, who'd you sit next to at lunch? Or what was your favorite item in math today? Because your feedback and telling us what they're saying helps us. Um, with quarantine and COVID, um, I encourage communication. That's always a huge one at the middle level. I know as they get older, you don't think they need you as much. I promise you teens and toddlers need the same attention. Um, please, please talk to them and um, communicate with the school. We are more digital than we have been in the past. Your student should be checking his or her email every evening because we do use the email communication fifth through A. If your child ch checked out a Chromebook and you have internet services, please encourage that. That should be part of their um, homework routine. Check the email. Check your Google Classrooms. All our teachers have been instructed to put all lessons in Google Classrooms. So if they have an appointment and had to sign out, their stuff should be in Google Classroom. I know many of our students prefer paper. I am, I don't miss, um, that she was old I was like wait a second I'm right there with you and I don't feel that old but I like paper too so if you do have a student even if you have internet and you do need makeup work please understand just because we're digital does not mean you cannot request that hard copy we will provide that as well um, but communication is huge please please let us know when you're having a problem you got a question um, give us a call um, let's see we're on week three and like I said, the, our biggest obstacle is getting them back in the routine. I'm sure you're seeing that at home. Um, if you, ne you need someone at the school, please give us a call. I can be reached through our webpage. I have a counselor link. I'm also blessed this year to have an intern. Um, and I couldn't ask for a better time to have an extra person to help me with just middle school. And Ms. Erin Finn can just stand up really quick. Guy. She's a student of at Austin State University and she is finishing up her time and doing her internship. So you may get a letter saying that Ms. Erin is working with your student to help them with middle school growing pains as we call it. Um, or she may contact you and say, hey, I met your daughter today and you know, we enjoyed having you. We encourage you, I can't say this enough, to give us a call. Don't let a question go unanswered. Um, we too are trying to get back on track from the non-traditional ways of the last two years and we know it's going to take time. I don't like to talk behind the scenes. <laughs> She's a much better speaker than I am. <laughs> um, I'm Ms. Lewis. I am the counselor at the high school um, and I'm going to piggyback a little bit off of what she said. Communication is key. If you have any problems, please let us know. We're there to help um, and we can't help if we don't know. So talk to your kids if there's anything going on. Just give us a call if you need, if you have problems with grades or checking grades, parent portal. I know Maria's going to talk a little bit more about it. But I know that is the biggest way to look at what your child is doing um, at school and what their grades look like. Um, one thing I do want to emphasize um, that we are working on again this year is our HELA. We brought it back. Um, and that is the best way that a child can catch up on anything that they miss. It's an hour long, it lasts, it's during the day, so they don't have to stay after school. They can come, get any kind of math help, reading help, anything that they may need during that time so they don't have to come after school, they don't have to have transportation or anything like that. It is there just for help. 
Um, so I do want to stress that. Please have your child. If they miss a day, you need to go to Hilo. You need to go to those classes you missed, talk to them, see what you missed, and get caught up so you don't fall behind because this is really trying times. But we are really excited to be back five days a week. Um, another thing I do want to tell you about is our after school SAT, ACT prep class. Um, we are very excited to have Michael Boyd back um, for about three more weeks and he is helping us to get that program started. He's helping the kids. I know we started it early because we had some testing early um, so that we could have them ready for the SAT that's coming up. Um, so if your child is a 10th grade junior, senior, please encourage them to utilize this because it has tremendous results. Um, we do have our FAFSA nights. We're going to have two this year, so we're going to talk about hope, financial aid, how to do the FAFSA. We're actually going to sit down and apply for the FAFSA if your child is a senior. Um, like I said, we'll have that twice this year, so we're excited about that too, and all of that communication will come out through your child and through Facebook. So if you'll follow our Facebook page, um, tons of resources on there. So. Will you talk about NEST real quick? NEST is postponed right now. Okay. okay. Um, all right. So as soon as we know more, we started up NEST and then we postponed it with all that's going on. So once it's back, um, NEST is an after school, like a study time, study hall. Athletes are mandatory. It's open for any student. So you get a snack and then you get to go to any classroom where you need help. It's also there to make up attendance. So if you do miss a day or you're quarantined, which that doesn't count against you, but if you were to miss a day, you can make up your time in after school nest. Um, but we will be bringing that back soon. All right, thank you so much. Um, I don't know, is this coming through? Do we need this? Okay. Um, I also just want to say real quick, Miss Ray, who was not able to come this morning, is the um, is the counselor at the elementary school. She also, um, like Miss um, Daniel, Miss Williamson, and Miss Lewis, has her information online. She has a counselor's corner on the website, and um, you can uh, also. Um, so I request having an appointment with her or have your child talk with her. Um, she has she has a really great um, interactive page. So got to look her up um, if you need some resources at the um, elementary school. So next I'm going to have, um, I'm going to kind of skip down a little bit. Miss Maria Free here is here. She's one of our registrars. She's at the elementary. I don't see any of our other registrars. I don't think they were able to make it. It's a hard position, especially at the beginning of school, for the registrars to sneak out. Um, and so, oh, Miss Ray did just come in the door. Um, so soon as Miss Free gets done, Miss Ray will, will speak real uh, okay. All right, Miss Ray, we were on counselors, so we'll have you come on up and talk about what you do. Um, I was telling about your interactive page and how cool it is, so they've got to check that out. Uh, but this is Tykeen and Ray. Good morning. How y'all doing? I'm Miss Ray. I'm a counselor at the elementary school, so I serve as our pre K through fourth grade babies. And at the elementary school level, we mainly focus on social, emotional, growth, academic growth at that age. Um, um, some of the programs that we push out, we do have individual sessions um, that are not long-term, but we do um, have Georgia Pines. So we feel like students that need that extensive, we do, the, do those for referrals within. We also have small group. This, um, at this month, at the end of the month, we will send out those small group <clears throat> referrals so you all can complete those, send them back. Each month, we try to focus on our character trait. August is respect. Um, and we do do guidance lessons throughout the school year. And this year, I'll be mainly pushing in doing their specials, so we won't take away from their academic time. So I try not to take all the specials. Most of my um, guidance are about 20, no more than 30 minutes. Um, so that's about it. Our main thing with the elementary, please keep the line of communication open with your teachers, I'm not the liaison, so if you're unable, all teachers have Remind, so use the Remind app. If you send a message through Remind, they will, um, they're guaranteed to send you a message back. Now, if you have an issue with contacting your um, teachers, um, a lot of times because they have instruction, you can always call the school. I'm at extension 206, and I'm like that li liaison between the teachers, the parents. Um, so. If you all have any questions, I'm always there. Will you talk about student of the month real quick? Yes. Each, each, we have um, different character traits. Like I said, this month character, character trait is respect. So each month, we highlight a student from each homeroom that has exemplified those character traits. 
Um, so that's something to look forward to. So it's the biggie. We have a student of the month um, program on the last Thursday of each month. So it's about an hour, um, and we highlight those students that get a certificate along with a coupon to eat at the Huddle House. So that's exciting. A lot of kids look forward to that. Thank you so much, Ms. Bray. We appreciate you. All right. Okay, so Ms. Free's going to come now. She's going to talk about, especially Parent Portal, and I'm going to pull it up while she's talking. Um, but if you can talk a little bit about that and how with the resources on Parent Portal. But you may have to come here. You can kind of slide it over there. All right, while she's pulling that up, I'm going to just talk to y'all a little bit about the parent portal, kind of go through how you log in, how, um, who you need to contact if you can't log in, and um, just go over kind of some of the, the um, high points of it. So. And some of you may already have it. Um, I will tell you for pre-K and kindergarten, it's not as useful. You can go in and view attendance, that kind of thing, but they do not do numeric grades um, for pre-K and kinder. So it's not as useful for those grades as it is for the other grades. <laughs> You're good. Oh, Miss Lewis is gone, but I was trying to get a little fancier than she was by making a PowerPoint. <laughs> Okay, the first slide will just tell you how to log in, where, where you go to log in. Sorry, went away. <laughs> um, so we'll leave that up just a minute for y'all to write down the, uh, the website and how you log in. Okay, so all you do is go to our school website, which will be www.pelham-city.k12.ga.us. Um, to the right of that, you'll see a quick link. So you'll click on that, um, and down, I think six, six down will be Parent Portal, and you'll click on that. Um, next, it'll take you to this screen. You'll do the first screen will be this. You'll do Campus Parent. Over here, you will put in your login. Can they see over me? <laughs> can you? Can everybody see over Miss Smith? Okay, so you'll put your parent login here, um, the username and password, and then the next screen will show you what your username and password will actually be. Um, and you can try to log in. If it doesn't allow you, that's, that's the point. You need to call the registrars at the school or either Ms. Brenda Glass at the central office, and I'll give you that information on the next slide. Um, once you log in, did everybody get that? That was writing it down? Sorry. Yeah. So your username will be your first initial, last name, birth year. So this is an example. Um, your password will be your birthday with exclamation point. A lot of people forget that exclamation point. So just uh, remember that when you're logging in. And the whole four digits for your year. Right. Yes. And no slashes. So it's just, just the birth date. Um, everybody got that that wants to write it down? All right. Go on. Okay, so once you log in, uh, you'll see this message center on the side. Um, this is just kind of an overview of what each tab is. Um, the main tabs you'll probably want to use is grades, which will show you all their assignments. Any grades that the teacher has posted to the parent portal will be on there. Um, your attendance, it will show your child's attendance every day. Um, we, you know, we're all human, we make mistakes. We've had instances where child was accidentally marked absent. So if you see that, please call the school and we will get that corrected quickly. Um, here you'll see schedule. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, we don't really do anything with fees. The school will contact you with any fees that your kid might owe um, for whatever. So um, in the next tab, you can click on more and that'll be the next screen. Okay, so here you can see your address information. Um, the main ones you'll use is address information, family information, um, and then important dates. Important dates you can click on. It'll show you our fall break, winter break, Christmas break, any kind of breaks you want to know. Um, from the address tab and the family information tab, you can update your information, phone numbers, contacts, anything like that. So. Um, we can also do it at the school level too, so if y'all want to just call us, but 
it can be done on there. Okay, the app for the parent portal. A lot of parents call about this. Um, you'll need to download the app for the parent portal. What, what it's called under your app is Campus Parent. Um, and then your district name, you'll put in Pelham and search and you'll see Pelham City pop up and you click on that and then the state of Georgia. Um, and at that point, it'll take you to the login screen. Okay, who to call to get your parent portal set up? There's Ms. Ms. Glass is at our central office. She does my, uh, mainly all the students and they should already be set up as they enroll, she sets them up. Um, but she will help you with the parent portal, um, but she does mostly student portal. Um, Linda Norman's at Pelham High School, myself at Pelham Elementary School, Carolyn Hester at Pelham City Middle School, and then Ms. Glass is at our board office. So any of those people can help you. I will ask that if, if you have a student in the middle school that you do try to contact that registrar first. Um, any of us can do it, but just to keep, because it is right now so crazy at the school level. So, um, You can, yeah, unless they want to. Okay, and that's, that's it for me. Um, as always, thank you, and it's, it's a great day to be a Hornet. So. Does anyone have a question for Maria before she flies away? <laughs> I'll stay for a few minutes. This PowerPoint will be posted on our website, um, and then also if you email myself, I can send it to you, uh, whatever is easier. And that was the thing, too, I was going to mention, trying to contact any teachers. It's their first um, initial, their first name and their last name, at pelham-city.k12.ga.us. So it's pretty consistent across the board. Once in a while we get a couple that have the same uh, initial for the first name and last name, so we've had to switch up a little bit. So if for some reason you're having trouble, uh, just you know, let us know, okay? All right, a, a parent just brought it to my attention. On the, um, when you log in the parent portal, the picture may be, oh, it may be a couple of years old. Um, I'll get with our technology department there. When, we, when the picture people come every year, they normally send us a disc and we upload it. But um, I will ask that question, so thank you. <laughs> oh, your child's picture, okay, gotcha. <laughs> okay, yeah, we wanna keep our... <laughs> okay, um, and then for the, I also wanna just t introduce you to our, um, we have a math coach this year and a literacy coach for our whole system. And so I'm gonna let them talk a little bit about what their role is and um, especially um, with math, and do we have Ms. Chantel? Yep, Ms. Chantel is here too. Um, and she uh, has also really, she's kind of our math guru at the elementary school as a teacher and um, has done some parent workshops about Eureka Math. And so I want them just to talk to you real quick about them as a resource um, and mainly their, the academic coaches that work with our teachers, but I do want them to talk a little bit about their role this year um, and how that's different. And we're really blessed to be able to have them. Um, um, it's not always that our system has been able to, to have that. So um, we're excited to have them. So I'm gonna introduce uh, Ms. Chantrell first. Ms. Chantrell, Dr. Bruton is a um, kindergarten teacher, almost said first grade, um, but she um, has been third grade in our system and first and now kinder this year. Um, and so she did a really great workshop a couple of years ago about Eureka Math. I want her just to talk a little bit about um, some of the helps that are out there for parents with Eureka. It's Common Core and it's, it's difficult for a lot of us. And so I just want her just to kind of to do a little summary of that. So Dr. Bruton, if you'd come. And then Miss Nikki Smith is our math coach and Miss Alicia Donaldson is our literacy coach. And they're gonna come after her also to talk about their roles. This doesn't stretch very far. Okay. So. <laughs> Good morning. I just left my kindergarten classroom, so give you a second. Um, <laughs> I am very glad to be here to talk about Eureka Math. I don't consider myself a math guru, but I have seen Eureka Math used from the very beginning levels, um, all the way up to my son who's now in 10th grade, no, 11th grade at the high school. Um, starting with my daughter when she was in first grade, um, that's when I was first introduced to Eureka Math. And it is a different way of teaching and learning math. It's called a conceptual way, but it is the best way. It is really um, a tool that children are learning that helps them to really understand numbers and number concepts and the foundational skills help them to understand when they get into the harder maths in middle school and high school. 
I am excited to teach kindergarten this year because I get to see Eureka Math starting in at one of those foundational levels with our students so that they can learn the vocabulary, the terminology, and the different strategies that are used. And one of the reasons why it's so important to use the strategies that are being taught in class is because they are going to carry through their school, through their school life. They're going to expand, but certain things like 10 frames, number bonds, um, breaking, breaking down tens, understanding base tens, those things are going to lead to the higher maths. So if we kind of shortchange them by showing them different ways or strategies now, it's going to be harder for them to get to grasp those harder concepts later on. I did bring with me, and I'll leave it at the back table, a sheet that just breaks out a few resources that you can use at home. These are all free resources. They don't take any type of fancy um, setup. One, only one of them requires a login if you want to use it. Everything else is free and easy to access, especially in the times that we're in. We know that we've had to, go, ha, have had to go digital sometimes. Sometimes it's hard to get in contact um, with what's actually going on, but these are resources that you can use as long as you know what grade your child is in and then what lesson or module they're on, which you'll easily get that from their teacher. You can supplement what they're learning at, in school at home. Um, I'll just touch over a couple of these briefly. Each Eureka module has newsletters and teachers have gotten really good with either sending those home or posting them on their Facebooks or sending them through a Mind or Class Dojo. But I did include a link that you can use to go and pull those up. If you lose the hard copy, you can easily access it with your phone, a tablet, laptop, any of those devices. Those newsletters include mod models, actual pictures that explain how the teacher is doing it in class so that when your child says, my teacher did it this way or such as I said to do it this way, you can see exactly how and why it's being explained in class so that you understand what your child is doing now for homework or bringing home to you. I also included a, a link to some card games. I know that we have some students who like to um, extend their learning, parents want to extend their learning. These card games are easy. You can do them with a deck of cards. It doesn't take, again, any fancy materials. But these card games help them build math fact fluency. They can do them at home. And it's just a break from the paper or pencil tasks that they may be doing or the computer logins. These card games are easy, fun ways to practice some of those basic skills across different grade levels. Next, homework. Um, whenever your child is doing homework, Make sure that they're working it out, showing all of their steps. That's so important with Eureka Math. Um, they should be showing their work. That's one of the differences with Eureka Math is that there are lots of different models that they can use, and it's important that kids understand what they're doing and why they're doing, why they're doing it. One of the things in the lower levels that also extends up to the upper levels is read, draw, write. They should be able to read those math problems, draw one of those models that will work with solving that, and then write out their response in a complete sentence or a phrase, depending on their grade level. Of course, a kindergartner is not writing out a whole sentence, but by first, second, and third grade, they are often asked to explain or give some type of reason as to why their answer is correct. There is this um, guy on YouTube, he is excellent. His name is Dwayne Haybecker, and I included his link. You can just Google his name also. He provides almost for every single Eureka lesson, a video that explains what, what that lesson is about, what that concept is about, the vocabulary, he shows the models, he really walks you through it. As a teacher and a parent, I have found that very, very helpful because he's using it in language for parents to understand, as well as older students can watch those videos themselves. There's another video series that's really great. I started using it in first grade. The first grade team uses it. This is for kindergarten and first grade. It's called Teaching Independent Learners, and it's done by an actual teacher, and she uses her whiteboard and is really kind of almost interactive because she pauses and lets kids think and offer their answers. But again, for kindergarten and first grade, those foundational levels, she shows you the vocabulary, the models, the thinking behind it, so that even with our little ones, they're starting to get those skills that they need that are going to transfer up to the upper grade. Zern is a website we often use. It's free. Usually your teachers will provide a login. We might not have them yet, but you can check in with your teacher. It's a free website. And again, these lessons go hand in hand with what they're doing in class and provide extra practice. It's a free, it's a free website. 
And again, teachers usually do sign up their classes, so just check in with your teacher if you haven't gotten those yet. It's still early in the year, so we're still doing some of our diagnostic testing. We're still doing some of our relationship building in class, so those might not be out yet, but just check in and see. Um, if your teacher is going to provide a uh, Zern login for your child. That's just really great extra practice. And all of these things, they don't take more than about 10 to 15 minutes at night. So you don't want to overwhelm your child and stress them out. But 10 or 15 minutes extra practice, um, especially if they are finding it a little bit difficult or they want to extend their learning, that's about all the time they really need with these resources. Um, great Minds is the, is the um, framework or one of the frameworks that Eureka Math comes out of. They also provide parent tip sheets, again, with the vocabulary, um, examples and samples of each lesson. And I included a website that you can go to and download those on your own. Again, um, most teachers do provide those and send those home hard copy or post them on their digital sites. Knowledge on the go is another source that provides videos. I know some kids, they can watch a video and then they can do their own work. Some kids, you might want to watch the video with them and help them um, along the way. But Knowledge on the Go goes actually from K through 8 with video sources. So your children who have moved into middle school, there are now um, these actual supports for them as well. Khan Academy, which my son has started using <laughs> this year for chemistry, has great Eureka Math website, um, videos, additional tasks, and that's from third through eighth grade. Third grade is one of those really key pivotal grade levels. Um, I taught it in Texas. I taught it here. Um, it's when they start their testing. It's when they're, we are really checking to see how much they have grasped in those foundational years. So if you do have a child in third grade or know someone in third grade, really make sure that they're beefing up their math skills and their math knowledge this year um, so that they can then use that as they proceed. And when it's time for the Georgia milestone testing, they aren't afraid because they have strategies and models and lots of different um, resources for them to go to to get ready for that milestone, which they're preparing for all year long in class anyway. And then last but not least, connect with your child's teacher. After the last two years, teachers have become more available, more readily accessible to parents and families. We do not mind. I know um, talking to parents and families at night after school. Most of us have um, class dojo or remind. Most grade levels at the elementary level have a Facebook page for their grade um, that you can check in and see anything that is posted. So please, if you have questions, um, teachers are also, we're, you know, just like me, running from your class to trying to help with something else. They may be a little bit busy, but they definitely want you to be informed. They want you to know that they care about your child. So do not hesitate. Again, if your, if your child's teacher hasn't gotten a certain resource out, just ask. They could be running a mile a minute and might not have gotten to that task yet, but it's on their mind. But if you know your child needs that extra support, um, we want to go ahead and start getting it to them now while it's still early in the year so they can start practicing these things throughout the year to build their knowledge base. Um, and so all of the things that I referenced are here. I did include the links. I'll talk with Ms. Smith and see maybe if it can be posted so that you can just click on the link and get to it even faster. I think we're still learning our roles. <laughs> Um, I'm fortunate. I'm, I'm kind of in a unique position. I think now I have been, I have taught every, I've been in every grade level my entire career. This is my 27th year. And I taught 20 years at middle school in Cockwood County. I've been at the high school for the last seven years. And I taught a second grade class the other day, Skittles Math. So um, I am, you know, I'm not used to the hugging. I, I, I walk into the office and I'm like, y'all, I'm just not really used to that. But I'm really, enjoy, I'm really enjoying the atmosphere at the elementary school. I do come back and get really excited. And I was out last week with COVID, so it's been a crazy couple of weeks. But our job is mainly to support the teachers to support your children. Um, the, the teachers, as Ms. Dr. Bruton said, they have a lot on their plate right now. Uh, and just as parents do, those teachers are just swamped right now. And so our job is to help them with resources, help them provide uh, the best that they can give your child. Uh, I know with Eureka Math, some of the resources that she said, I have brand new teachers. I think I have five brand new math teachers this year. So who've never, and three of those have never even been in a classroom. So when I say new teachers, we're talking brand new teachers. So I've been providing them with the same resources that she just provided you guys so that they have those same ways to go. I know we do Eureka all the way up through fifth grade. 
Uh, we are going to start this year incorporating six through eight, some Eureka strategies. It doesn't quite match exactly with our Georgia standards. And that is something to let you parents know. Uh, it's been about eight years, but the Georgia standards for math are changing next year uh, at the state board meeting this August, which they haven't had yet. They will decide for sure to adopt them. I don't foresee it not being adopted. Uh, so it's not going to change a lot, but one of the things that I'm going to focus on with our teachers this year is looking at the new standards and what we already have in place so that it's a, a, just an easy transition and they're not having to redo again next year, that we're just already providing that so the students see that transition. It just makes it very smooth for them and makes it smooth for your children because, as, as Dr. Bruton said, this year is, uh, I was looking at our little kindergartners. Do you realize this is the first year excuse me, our first graders, first real school year they've had. I, and I didn't think about that until I thought, you know, how crazy it was at the high school. But I thought, oh, no, these first graders have never walked in a line. I was watching them practice their lines and things that high school we take for granted, watching them really get into those rituals and routines. So I know that's what they're focusing on a lot. And Eureka is very good at those rituals and routines and keeping the same vocabulary all the way through. But I'm also available for you. Um, I am a math nerd. Um, I, I do math problems on the weekend. Uh, I teach at Valdosta State on Tuesday nights, and I teach those, those soon-to-be teachers. Uh, they laugh at me because I, I do. I, I work math problems. Uh, they can tell you I was practicing the pre-K lessons at my desk the other day, and I was counting, you know, just like, just like they would be teaching the lesson. So um, it's exciting to see the little ones because uh, a lot of times by the time they get to us over here at the high school, you know, they're – they're kind of, yeah, so, they, so it's, the excitement's kind of interesting. And I'm learning a lot from Ms. Donaldson. Uh, I'm, I'm the oldest one in our little area, but she, uh, she has taught uh, math, fifth grade math, and she said one time that her test scores are jam up, so. Okay. Thank you. Well, good morning. Um, my name is Alicia Donaldson. I am the reading and literacy coach here for grades pre-K through eighth. I was born and raised here, graduated from Pelham. Um, I've been teaching uh, since about 2010. I've taught third and fifth grade. Um, this year is my first year in this role. I'm very excited about it. My job is to support teachers um, in anything that's dealing with the instruction of reading and literacy. So it is a job that encompasses a lot of tasks, but a very important one. Um, basically, our goal for this year is to look at expectations in terms of what students should know. What do we do or how do we assess their learning? What do we do if they aren't grasping it, which is intervention, which is going to be a huge piece for us this year because we know that most students, you know, miss that third, that fourth nine weeks and then last year we're only here two days a week. So intervention is going to be a very big focus for me and helping teachers figure out what strategies um, we need to implement to help our kids be on grade level if they're not. And then for those who are grasping the standards and learning, what do we do for them? So even looking at ways to enrich lessons and accelerate lessons for students who are already achieving. So that's the big goal um, for reading and literacy this year. Um, I meet with teachers every week in professional learning communities where we look at data, we look at um, areas of struggles for students and basically implement strategies to help them help kids. So we are in and out of the classrooms a lot, having conversations with teachers, um, looking at student work, and just figuring out ways to help best serve them with reading and literacy. And literacy is across the board. So, you know, even supporting math, science, and social studies teachers with ways to incorporate literacy in the classroom even in those areas, because if a student is struggling with reading, it's gonna affect every other content area. So really looking at how we can push out literacy, not just in our reading classes, but in all classes. Um, in terms of accessibility for me, if you all have any questions, concerns, you can contact me. My email is adonaldson at Pelham, you know, the rest of it. Um, I'm housed in the central office, but I'm always between elementary and middle school. Um, so if you have any questions about anything, let me know. I know a lot of times parents want to know what's the biggest thing I can do to impact reading and literacy for my child. And the answer is younger kids, 10 to 15 minutes a day, 
once they get a little bit older, you know, 20 to 30 minutes a day, sit down and read with them or to them. That is the most impactful thing you can do over any strategy that exists in the world. Seriously, 10 to 15 minutes a day because it's building their oral vocabulary. And once students oral vocabulary is built, it's gonna be easier for them to comprehend. So just 10 to 20 minutes a day to sit down and read. Um, I know if you're working, have, you know, um, children, schedules are busy, but it makes a difference. 10 to 15 minutes a day with those little ones. And then once they get older, encourage them just to stop for 20 or 30 minutes. Sit down and read a book, a magazine, something, even something that interests them. That's the most impactful thing you can do to help your child at home. But like I said, if you need me, I'm here. Um, I'm humbled and blessed to be in this role. Um, I look forward to helping you, helping our students. Um, so if you need me in any way, please don't hesitate to reach out. Sandals on. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, real quickly, I'm going to introduce our Georgia Pines representative, Miss Kawanja Sanders, had to leave, and I know Miss Belk um, is with us right now. She has to leave very quickly. I know a lot of you do. I have so many. Thank. I'm very thankful for our resources today, and so we're going to try to move it along so that um, so that they're able to get back to the things they need to do. But um, Miss Belk, if you'll speak about Georgia Pines real quick and the Gap program. Hello. How are you? I am Pamela Belk and I work with Georgia Pines and we are your connections here in Pelham City Schools. We are a behavioral health, mental health program that works actually in your schools with children and adolescents. So what do we do? We do comprehensive diagnostic assessments of the referrals that we get so that we can develop a plan that is specific to the child that we're working with. We call ourselves um, supporters because that's what we are. You already have an excellent base in your schools. And I think um, of all the school systems I've worked for, I, Pelham City Schools are so innovative because they're gonna do any and everything they can to make sure that your students are successful. So when we come along, we're supporting what's already there. We are helping these specific students in a specific area be more successful. Um, I think everybody thinks, oh, mental health, but mental health is just something that we all need to look at. And we all need to, what do you call that, enhance? And um, we have to know that our kids deal with a lot of things. And all the support that they can get, I think, would be great. So if you guys have any specific questions, please call me. We are confidential. And we were, the schools work very well with us with that. They give us space, which I think I love Pelham City Schools. They give us an office and, and they help us keep confidentiality of the students so that it wouldn't be an issue with them. But mostly we're just here to support. We're just here to enhance, ensure that these kids are successful in school. They're successful with their academics. They're successful with their behaviors and that they're successful with dealing with things that overwhelm them. So please give us a call if you need anything. You can connect with us through any of the school officials. And if anybody needs my personal number, you can have that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Bell, thank you. We are very blessed to have the counseling service with us um, in our um, school system. Um, and so next, I'm gonna have Sabrina Brown come on up and she's gonna talk to us a little bit about what Carnegie Public Library is doing and the resources that are there. Um, if you have not checked out the monthly activities that are going on, you've got to come out. So, Ms. Brown. Good morning, my name is Sabrina Brown. I'm the branch manager at the Pelham Library. Um, at the library, we have computers. You can check out books. Uh, a lot of teachers come out and they do um, tutoring in the back. You can study um, there. They can make copies. Um, we have different programs, arts, crafts, story hours during school time. We have an awesome summer program. This is my first year. Um, despite COVID-19, <laughs> um, I did have a good turnout. Um, this year, our theme was Tales and Tales, and we did had different performers come in with the animals. They brought in different animals, and then we told tales, you know, stories about it. Um, on Thursdays, most, well, I sent out a calendar that she sent with the parents, so we do story times even during school. Um, it's age appropriate with our summer program, and it's, the only requirement is, like, their age, and they read so many books, and they can get prizes, uh, T-shirts. 
We had an um, end of the reading song program party that they enjoyed. I was really surprised about the turnout, like I said, due to the pandemic, but I had a great turnout. Um, it, we, we open from 9.30 to 5.30 every day, um, Monday through Friday. We go to lunch from 12.30 to 1.30, but our doors are always open. If you want to tutor, study, use the computer, print, we scan. Right now, we don't have the um, fax machine, but I done start scanning stuff. <laughs> so I will scan to the email if they need it. Whatever y'all need, just come to the Pelham Library up 133 Hans Avenue, and we're there. Our doors are always open. Thank you. Brown. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Sorry, our cord doesn't reach. Thanks for taking time to come and stay. Um, and Miss Alexander is with us from the club, and we want her to talk a little bit about the resource of our club in town, um, which is an extension of our Mitchell County Club, um, and what um, your enrollment and what activities you have going on. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for saying. Um, I have a balloon that I wanted to blow up. So can I blow this balloon up for you all? Yes. <laughs> I'm Anna Alexander, Boys and Girls Clubs of Mitchell County. Um, I've been with the Boys and Girls Clubs for 20 years. I've lived in Georgia for 20 years, so I'm now a resident. I love this place and I really love Pelham, especially to me because it's a home town. It seems that everybody knows everyone, but nobody seems to know about the boys and girls clubs because when you bring a new child into the club, oh, I didn't know this was here. But then when they find out what's behind those doors, we get more children and more children. And right now we can't take any more children. Not because we, it's due to COVID. We want to make sure the children are safe. They wear masks every time they come in. Um, I've learned sign language and this is keep your mask up. So every time we see it over the nose, they just look, keep your mask up. But this balloon represents every child and every parent during COVID. COVID took a mental hit on our children and it took a mental hit on our staff. We didn't know what we were gonna do. So I said, you know what? This balloon represents every child and every parent that entered my life during COVID. You know, you go to work, everybody had a job, before the pandemic, you know, everybody listened to their favorite music. As you heard my song, Bruno Mars went off. That's my alarm that tells me when I need to eat. So, you know, we, we listen to our favorite mu music that keeps us going. This is us. This balloon represented us pre-pandemic, before the pandemic even hit. So our kids go to school every day looking like this because every day you send them off with breakfast, or you send them off with an I love you, or you send them off, get out of the car, you know what you gotta do. Or you send them off, get out of your phone, who are you texting? But this is what we all look like every morning. Every morning, because we are blown up with love. We are blown up with the traditions of our family. Like the little baby back there, that's music to my ears just listening to him. Can you imagine when he gets 18? Everything that he has learned from the time he's sitting there now till he's 18, each one of us will have touched him in some way. So this, this is us. We finally get to school. You meet that one teacher. It's not a teacher that probably should have retired. And you're happy because mom sent you out looking like this. You see that teacher? Hi, Mr. Brown. Get out of my face. You lose a little air. What's the matter with Mr. Brown today? I'm happy to be here. I'm alive. I have on clothes, they not, might not be the best. I have on shoes, it's what my parents could afford. Well, forget about Mr. Brown. But think about that child who's blown up, past Mr. Brown, now he goes to the teacher, looks in his bag to turn in his homework, and homework is missing because they forgot it was on the table. Oh, you always forget your homework. Not every day, but because you said that, that takes a little more air out of me. So then you go and you try to redo your homework and you miss lunch. You go to the lunch lady, I, I just missed lunch, I'm trying to get my, get out of here, you don't need lunch, you just ate, you play too much. This is what goes on every day, but this is our child or this is us at work. You know that boss that said you didn't get the uh, report in on time. This is us. 
So we finally get back to class. We haven't had our lunch. We met the teacher who really doesn't like us. Then you meet that bully that's there every day, bothering you and you're afraid to tell your parents. So that pulls out a little more air. But you see that light? You know you gotta get on that school bus or you gotta walk to the Boys and Girls Club of Mitchell County. And who do you see? You see me, every day without fail. During COVID, I never miss a day of work. During the school year, and probably Miss Cindy can probably attest, I never missed a day of work because I knew I was built for this. They come in with that light, and as long as they have that light, I'm there to help blow them back up. So every day, guys, we have kids like this. Every day, guys, we have staff, children, workers, employees, just like this. You never know who you're going to come in contact with, but you know that at their house, they have a light. In their heart, they have a light. So treat them like they have a light so that you can blow them back up at the end of the day. So that's Boys and Girls Club. And I couldn't say, oh, Boys and Girls Club, we're open every day from 3 to 7. We only cost $30 during the school year, $50 in the summer. That's $80 of your hard-earned money. But guess what? We meet our mission statement to enable all youth, especially those who need us most, to reach their full potential as productive, responsible, and caring citizens. How do I know it works? I have a daughter. Boys and Girls Clubs, every year and every summer she's here with me at Boys and Girls Club. She worked, volunteered age 12, got a job age 13, worked age 14, went off to high school, went off to college, got her bachelor's degree. The moment she walked across that stage with her bachelor's degree during the pandemic, she walked out to the register's office and my mother said, hey, you got your bachelor's degree. I'm proud of you, but I want you to have your master's. A week later, signed up to get her master's degree, Two years later, in a pandemic, because she had a virtual graduation, she graduated with a master's. She opened up her own business. She has two businesses now, and she works at Goldman Sachs. Boys and girls clubs work. Do you know why it works? Because I won't let it not work. We're Boys and Girls Clubs of Mitchell County. Look us up on Instagram, BGC of Mitchell County. Look us up on Facebook. So if you've never heard of Boys and Girls Club, just take a look and see what we do. And if you ever hear anybody say, oh, that club, walk in and see it for yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, I've got a couple more. Thank you so much for waiting and, and taking time. Miss um, Carol Willis is going to speak to us real quick about a really cool program that kind of feeds off of what Ms. Alexander was just talking about. Um, and it takes our students here in high school, helping them get in the direction of college. And so it's super important and we're very excited about it. Is this our fifth year of having? Oh, we're starting our fifth year. Fifth year. Yes. Okay, all right. All right, I um, hope you can hear me okay. I have a pretty big, pretty big voice. Um, I am Kara Willis and I am the director of the College Bound program. College Bound is all about helping students go to college. It starts with a ninth grade student, and we continue to work with them all the way until they graduate high school, even the summer after high school graduation. So what is it all about and why are, why are we here? Well, we just want to help students with some of those little pieces of going to college. It's not just about academics, it's about some of that other stuff as they get older. What career do you want to go to? What college do you need to go to to meet that career? Um, once you get accepted, have you filled out your dorm paperwork? Did you get that turned in on time? Did you get that um, acceptance letter turned in on time? Are you going to live on campus? Are you going to use the meal plan? It's some of that little red, tedious tape stuff that just drives us bonkers. And so through the College Bound Program, one of the resources is that we are able to put two coordinators at the high school to meet with the students every Tuesday and Thursday, and then we're also able to do a summer program. So I, 
without giving you very specific things that we do, you can just think of it globally as a college prep program. Because what your child needs to walk on campus that very first day of college may look different than what somebody else's child does. So the way that we're able to provide that resource, and I provide you a handout, is that Pelham City School System and Southern Regional partnered together and submitted to the U.S. Department of Education for a grant for one, and we received $1.4 million to be administered over the five years. We will begin our fifth year this school term. And so if you're a parent who has a child that's in the middle school, you're like, well, crap, my child won't be able to participate because this is the last year. Well, never fear because we always have the opportunity to rewrite again. And because we already have an existing program, we receive priority on receiving that money. Also, a fun fact, I was on a webinar last week and they were talking about the College Bound program, which nationally it's called Upper Bound. We tagged it College Bound here in Helen. A fun fact is only 17% of high schools in the entire United States have this program. That makes us pretty special. It's also a huge investment for just this community. So with that, we only serve 60 students per year. And you're like, well, that's a lot of money coming in for us to serve 60 students per year. But the reason is it's because it's very intense, it's very individualized, and we spend a lot of time working with those students that want to go to college. So in your graphic, you can see that we work with 60 students a year, and this represents, our pie chart tells you, that we are pretty much equally served um, have students in each of the grade levels. For next year, or this school term, I shouldn't say next year, for this school term, we will have approximately 12 openings to, for your child to be accepted into that program. Generally, it comes from our seniors who have graduated the previous year. So we will be taking applications for that. We encourage students to start as early as possible because the more time you spend with us, the more services and resources that we can give you, but we will accept a student at a higher grade level. So as soon as they hit the high school, start looking for us and start um, asking um, your guidance counselor for information, your classroom teacher for information, or even stop by the library on Tuesdays and Thursdays and you'll see our coordinators there and they can give you information. So we have a 93% college acceptance rate. And this graphic at the bottom gives you a visualization of the college, different colleges that students have been um, accepted into and Southern Regional does have the largest showing even though we're hosted by Southern Regional we do not recruit for that school we want you to go wherever you need to go we have Georgia Southern, Valdosta State, Georgia State, Albany State, University of Georgia, Columbus State all of these different colleges are where some of our people have gone into this little box right here that says various that's where we've had students like that um, Maybe like we've had one student go to Georgia Tech, one student go to Amherst, one student to go to the different colleges in Georgia. Now our 93% college acceptance rate does not include military. They do not allow us to include that. It also does not include students who may have taken a COVID year off, COVID really impacted our numbers, a COVID year off and started the following year. It's only for students who immediately go into college um, after high school. Pre-COVID, our number was 99%. So it really does have a large impact. And again, this is very individualized to meet your needs. So if you have a high school student, if you have a godchild that is a high school student and you know they want to go to college, that's the bottom line, do you want to go to college? Then you need to come see us and we will help you with all of those steps. We have a contact information. If you're interested and want more details, please reach out. The two numbers will go directly to our coordinator, and then that is our email address. So please reach out, and we'll be happy to talk to you on an individual basis. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you so much. I'm going to introduce Ms. Shirley Daniel from Mitchell County School. She's um, she's kind of, I guess, the director, um, and I guess she developed, actually, um, something called Parent University, and it's been a really successful program in 
um, Mitchell County, and it's well, it's open to our school system as well, and so that's really why I wanted her to come talk about it um, and talk about the things that they've been doing. So, Ms. Daniel, you'll come talk. And we're almost done. Thank you so much for staying with us. And we have Ms. Jessica after Ms. Daniel. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, first and foremost, my name is Shirley Daniels, and I am a parent mentor. A parent mentor was um, was with the school with students with disabilities. Special education is my um, passion. Um, also, working, I'm a parent coordinator like Ms. Cindy Smith, and I we've worked together several times. And like most of us in school system, you wear several different hats. Um, but passion for parents, being a parent mentor, that means I can't teach you anything. It's just that I can tell you what I have done. And what I love to do is to teach and help parents. Because it seems like with the educators, we're left out. Not personally, but you know what I'm saying, it's just so much. So Parent University was established in 2005 from Savannah, Georgia, with resources that, um, you know, beyond, because that's a bigger city. They started a class on Saturday, and they had partners, and they, act, they go through a full year of graduation, because it is a curriculum. They have classes for you know, different things, life skills, financial classes, parenting classes, educational classes. Something that, you know, that maybe the parents had to put on hold for a while because of our children and students. So, Reverend Edwards, who is um, really the director who started the program, but he and I were parent mentors. He has a grandson with disabilities. So we went to all those classes and training being a parent mentor. But anyway, parent mentor is basically, not parent mentor, parent university, like I say, is actually a class. We've had, uh, we started in 2017, actually. So we had a full year before Hurricane Michael came. But we, our biggest partner was the uh, housing authority, Camilla Housing Authority, to have some place to have our classes and to start them. So that was one of the biggest things. Just like you have all these resources now, and we actually go to class. We did it, and then Mitchell County School System also partnered, and that means we came in the school system for at least two hours from 10 to 12, like Thursday, you know, Thursday morning. And those parents who did not work or were at home came to the class. And we have facilitators that come in, Miss Jessica has been one of them, Miss um, Ms. Del, you know, GED, and anyone else that went. But it's open to Mitchell County, you know, system, from Cell City to wherever. You know, because actually, we need unity in our community. So we reach out. And um, I'm not going to take up a whole lot of your time, but it has a wealth of programs. The young lady that graduated. Have the young lady that graduated, our first graduate, was uh, 2019. We had a graduation. She was a single parent of five children. You should see her now. She's in college. She, she's taken all our classes. She has excelled beyond measure, but she was willing. She had that life that Ms. Alexander was talking about. Ms. Jessica can concur with it um, and she's teaching other parents and students but just to make it short any information there is a flyer here you're welcome to call I have my number and everything is on here um, our classes will start in September you know due to COVID we have a class at the high school and also we partner with Mitchell County House of Hope and just, that will give you all the information on the flyer but, you know, any time that you need any information or would like to um, come to the class, we also do Zoom, so we will be on hybrid. And we're, we're, we have like 
three or four different counties now with Americas and different counties. Good morning, Hill High School. Welcome but anyway, to thank you Friday for your time. But please, if you need any information, give me a call. Please stand and join me in a moment of thought and we'll reflect on today's activity. Uh, can y'all hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is about as loud as I can get, um, but I can I can take my you mic. You can try the microphone out, but it's loud. Okay. Um, okay, okay. Um, first, before I talk about Mitchell County Children and Youth, LaDonna Dale was here but had to leave, and I want to point out the flyer that she had on the table. There's adult education classes here in Mitchell County for anyone that did not finish high school, and there's more options now than ever, um, and so they can tailor um it to fit your need there's quite you can test on they have um, online tests they have um some new programs called the high set test and LaDonna can tell you more about that but what i know is that sometimes like you know you may have somebody that comes out of high school that has a good bit of credits and i think they're working to allow them to use part of their high school credits towards the ged so if you know of anyone, LaDonna really is struggling to get students. And that's a resource that we know that we need in our community. And sometimes if we don't utilize our resources, they go away. You know, and, and so that's definitely a resource that we want to keep. And um, so please, if you know anyone at all, um, please send them her way. Alrighty, so I'm Jessica Jennings, and I'm the director for Mitchell County Children and Youth. Um, which is also the Family Connection Collaborative for Mitchell County. Um, I've been there for 21 years, and in 21 years we've done all kinds of different things. It almost just seems like it depends on, it, and it does, it depends on what the needs are in the community at the that time. And so, of course, the needs this past year have been tremendously different than um, the needs um, and, and the things that we've done before. So with that, um, I've, we've updated our brochure and it's on the table. Our contact information is on the brochure, um, but it lists uh, um, some of the, the main things that we have going on uh, right now. And uh, a couple of the, the main things that I wanna uh, point out is that we have a really big literacy component to our work and um, so we have a, a program called books for kids and we give out books uh, everywhere we go so we'll be at the um, literacy night yes. handing, handing out books um, we come to um, different community events and hand out books but if you are a part of anything and that you need books let me know um, I will get you books for your activity. If I have enough time, I can order books specific to whatever topic or age group um, that you need. It, it takes me a couple weeks to get them in, so I need a little bit of a heads up if, if I'm gonna have to do that. We do the dictionary project every year. We hand out dictionaries to all the third grade kids. Um, we still do that. Um, we have a supply closet. We actually started this pre-pandemic and it came in very handy. Uh, we had a lot of families that had, that utilized it during the pandemic. Um, the door, one of the door prizes today is actually just a sampling of our supply closet. But we assist, <laughs> we assist families in need with household items such as laundry detergent, uh, cleaning, uh, you know, bathroom cleaning, toilet cleaning. We've done diapers for kids. We've done diapers for adults. So we take each family individually, find out exactly what they need, and then put together a, uh, a box of supplies based on what they need. And um, so that, that is, uh, you can contact us for that. Um, another thing that we've done, um, and this is a, a result of COVID, is that at the beginning of the pandemic, we, received, we started receiving funds. Um, for utility bill assistance. Okay, your phone interruption. If you have both nights or to meet this gender in your helos, please send them to the front office. Thank you. And so we have received 
funding over you know the last year and a half to, to assist families impacted by COVID with utility bills, mortgage, um, rent. Um, in some cases, we were able to provide some grocery vouchers. So it was just, um, and then uh, we did get some funding occasionally where we could open it up to even families that were not affected by COVID. But almost everybody, when you think about it, has been affected by COVID in some way. Miss Shirley had a family that she worked with. We were able to provide um, a wheelchair for a family. And they, so, the, I mean, there, it's all over. So it just depends on the funding that we have. Um, sometimes we might not have but, you know, $500 sitting there. And other times we might have 10000 So it just depends on what's available. I do have a waiting list. So if we don't have funds available at that time, I will put um, the family on the waiting list and then get them in order. Like I just called a family the other day. We had a donation to come in. I called a family that's been on the waiting list for months and said, hey, you know, we can do your utility bill. Um, so that, and then our resource guide is on the table. Um, it's been recently updated. So this is the updated as of, I think the, the last edits to it was just a few weeks ago. We just had these delivered this week. Um, I have an electronic version as well, so if you ever need an email to you, let me know. I can email it. Um, and this is, um, and I'm sure there's resources in the community that's not in here, but we try to add to it, so it's a living document. So uh, we, we update it, add to it, um, and we'll be glad to share it with you via email or hard copy. And I've got plenty more um, if you know you need if you need those. The last thing that I want to talk about is MASS, the Mitchell Attendance Support Team. So I'm the secretary for MASS, and I get a lot of questions about um, school attendance. And there's a little blurb in our um, brochure about that. But um, the biggest thing about school attendance is that, and, and this is what I always, when parents call me, and what I've seen working with MASS all these years, document. So if your child is out, make sure you get a note sent into the school, either a parent note or a doctor's excuse, and keep a copy for your records. And then, um, and then stay in contact. If your child has um, an illness, um, you just make sure the school is aware of that and, um, and, and keep, in, keep in contact with the school. Usually it's the school counselor. Sometimes they have, each school might have an attendance clerk. So each school kind of has a designated person that's different at, at all with all of our schools, but just communication. And um, so that, that's the biggest thing. I think over the last year, the biggest attendance issue that we saw was kids not logging on for their virtual class. And so at one of our schools that we served, we had a child that missed almost 200 classes. So that wasn't 200 days, but 200 class periods. So they, you know, they might sign on for history, but miss math or miss English and get science. So it was kind of just a combination. And, um, and when, you know, already not being in school and just the loss of learning, you know that has an impact on their, um, their success in school. And so we're hoping that as things return to normal, you know, we won't, we won't see that anymore. But one of the things that, you know, that families can come to us, if you're having school attendance issues, if there's a, a reason why your child is not able to get to school, let us know and we try to work through those barriers and make sure that we can eliminate those as much as possible so that your child can be in school um, and, and learning. Mm -hmm. And I think those are, are the main things that, um, that I wanted to, to share, but feel free to to call or email, and we'll be glad to share anything. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Um, student success is what our, our theme is today and, just, um, and throughout the year. Uh, we want to see your children do the best they can, and we want to help if there's any support that's needed um, in doing it. So I'm going to draw some names, and so you can go ahead and say goodbye to the camera.